Firstly, Distant Scouts, John, your tip to use the cellulose thinners, uh, the gun wash, to take the paint off the inside of the boat. Also, let me go from this to this. Not only does it take the paint off, which means I now know it's not a two-pack epoxy paint, it stripped the adhesive off the ceiling, and I think, personally, it did it quicker than acetone. Plus, you saved me a fortune because it's half to two-thirds the price of acetone. Although it does eat your gloves up quickly, it just destroys the rubber. So I'd make sure you, you keep it away from plastics, uh, varnished surfaces, lacquered brass, any rubber seals. Just, it, it will want to eat them, I think. I tried to use a cotton rag to take the adhesive off. Uh, it didn't seem to hold all that much. It sort of... Uh, held just enough thinners and it was just smooth enough to to slide across the adhesive so I didn't really like that. The next option was a microfiber cloth. Now I know from experience you can put these in the washing machine, put them in the tumble dryer and they come out pretty much brand new. But I don't know if it was the thinners eating the, the fibers or maybe the adhesive just got trapped in there and when the solvent evaporated it was really in there. But this is very rough now and it's not it's not what it once was. So while these are ideal, they hold a lot of uh, thinners, they're rough enough to, to really scrub it away. Once the, once the thinners have softened the adhesive, this is rough enough to really scrub it away uh, but they're not cheap it cost you a fortune so what I ended up using was these these disposable cloths uh, just from the supermarket I ended up just scrunching them up pouring the, the thinners letting it soak in they held a lot and they, they seemed to scrub pretty well they, they held too much thinners really because when you, you're squeezing it to try and scrub you have to be careful it doesn't leak out uh, but they last about the same length of time your gloves last so that was that was good they used one of those got rid of the gloves and moved on so now an update for the panels uh, for the V-Birth the epoxy was fully cured I keyed the surface with 180 grit sandpaper wiped it down gave it a coat of varnish left it overnight for 12 or 13 hours in a heated room but then I didn't have access to that heated room for any further coats so for the second coat I had to take the panels put them in a cabin outside which is basically uh, like doing it in a garage it's just cold I then gave it a second coat but after that I was off work sick uh, with the flu for a week came back and the varnish that was supposed to take 24 hours to cure had skinned over but it was still you could still leave finger marks it wasn't fully dry um, so at first I thought maybe the blush of the epoxy which is like uh, a wax that comes out of the epo epoxy I thought maybe I hadn't gotten rid of all of that I'd used warm soapy water and a rag and really cleaned them so I was pretty confident that it wasn't that um, I thought maybe it was the cold or something to do with the humidity so I took them out of the cold room now that they'd skinned over I wasn't too concerned about dust I wasn't really too concerned about anything as long as it dried so I took them out of the cold room into the warm room and over the last week they've been drying very very slowly but it's getting there it's also very wrinkled almost like I put too much varnish on but I, I, I don't think I did I've also had second thoughts about the pressure sensitive adhesive, the peel and stick veneer. I'm having too many uh, problems with it to recommend it. I don't think I'd recommend it. The idea is brilliant. Uh, there's no VOCs, the, the, the solvent smells that you, you get. The, you peel it off, you stick it down. But as you've seen where I made a mistake and it stuck down where I didn't want it to, 
couldn't get that up. If I'd been using contact cement, I could have got a heat gun on it or even a hairdryer and just heated up and peeled it away. The contact cement, it will be more difficult, but I'm having adhesion issues, like I said, with this uh, pressure sensitive adhesive. And I know the adhesion that you get from contact cement is a lot better. So going forward, I think I'll redo these panels completely. Although I, I will, I'm not going to do it anytime soon. And another bonus to switching from the pressure sensitive adhesive to the contact cement is that the paperbacked veneer that I can get, the widths are twice that of the peel and stick veneer. So I'll be able to get away with not having to joint anything because the gaps where I'm, I'm meeting up the veneer, I, I, I don't think, I, some places are perfect, some places are horrible. So these are what I've bought for the main cabin. I love the look of them, but to be honest, they do seem a little bit cheap once you've got them in your hand. Thankfully, no one will be handling them, but they will be going there. And I don't know if you can see, maybe you can tell, I've replaced the filament bulbs inside with LEDs. And they do work nicely. I'll be drilling into the ceiling and then I'll epoxy in a nut and then hold them in with brass machine screws. But for now, I've just got one stainless screw going into a hole that was already there. The favor that I need is if I put a diesel heater in there with my fuel tank and have the outlet for the hot air here, Will that be good enough if I also put some fans to circulate the air in here? Or will I need an outlet here and then run ducting forward so I can get to the main cabin there? Because right now I'm thinking the shorter run to take it just there is all I'm going to need. It reduced the amount of ducting, it'd also save a lot of space in all the storage here. So I, I, I'm leaning more towards putting it here, but I don't know if there's any reason I shouldn't. If, if people have tried it in the past and the, the forward just stays cold. But yeah, if you can let me know and give me any advice, then I'd be more than grateful.